Good morning, all of you. Today we are going to start chapter eight, introduction to economics. So in this part, we are going to start a new topic that is economics. What is economics? What are the importance of economics? And how it is related in our daily life? That we are going to learn. You may be knowing that when uh, your parents may be uh, calculating their income and expenditure. Each family's income is different. Suppose a family is getting the monthly income 10,000 or 20,000, 50,000. In that family, if it is uh, earning 20,000 uh, rupees in their monthly income, how they are spending for their daily needs? And it should be balanced. Their income and expenditure should be balanced. The expenditure should not be more than the income. In that case, that particular family has to manage it within the income, what they are getting. If a family is earning 20,000 rupees, their expenditure also should be included in that. It should not be exceed more than 20,000. So, how to manage that? So, each family has their own priorities. So, according to that, they will spend their spend the income what they received. Okay. And when expenditure will be more than the income, that family will be suffer later. So, each family will be try to adjust their income and expenditure. Okay. So, that it that study is coming under or this type of study and how to adjust the or how to balance the income and expenditure is coming under the economics in a simple manner in our daily life in our family we can do like that that means we have to balance the income and expenditure our expenditure should not be ex exceed than the income okay so each family how we are managing that one how we are managing that means we have to give importance for the priorities like the water and the food, uh, medicine. These all are the priorities. Apart from we are going for a picnic, our expenditure, our income is not up to the mark. Then we have to avoid the unnecessary things like the luxurious life that family can't uh, follow. So in that way, we are adjusting the income and expenditure. So what is economics? The word economics derived from the Greek word oikonomia. The word economics derived from the word Greek word oikonomia. So what is the meaning of that? Household management or family management. Adam Smith is known as the father of economics. He told that economics is the study of wealth and economics is the difference between income and expenditure. Production processes, market prices, Pricing of goods are the factors which are related to the economics. And the study of economics helps us to understand what are the causes for poverty and which all remedial measures we can take to avoid the poverty. And it also helps us to understand the production, distribution and uh, manufacturing uh, units, the products of the uh, countries which all uh, goods are producing and the exporting goods and how much each country is earning through their foreign exchange and national income and foreign investment. So to understand these whole things, the study of economics is playing an important role. According to the economy and the political beliefs, each country is adopted different types of economic system. There are three types of economics. First one, capitalist economy. Second one, socialist economy. And third one, mixed economy. So in that first one, it is capitalist economy. So what is capitalist economy? The means of production will be owned and controlled by the private individual. The means of production, that means the how to produce, which type of uh, goods should be produced, and uh, standard price or decision of the standard price related all the things will be controlled and owned by the private individuals. This type of economy is known as capitalist economy and the main aim of this type of economy is to achieve maximum profit. 
and there will not be any consideration for the working groups or the laborers it will be always concentrated to how to achieve maximum profit germany japan usa etc are the countries which have uh, which adopted the capitalist economy now the second type of economy it is socialist economy here the means of production will be owned and controlled by the government and the main aim is to uh, provide the maximum welfare to the uh, society or the working groups and all the decisions related uh, how to fix the price and the products will be controlled by the or will be taken by the government example china and russia are the countries which are following this socialist economy and the third type of economy it is mixed economy in this mixed economy we can see that the characteristics of capitalist society or capitalist economy and the socialist economy and here all the decisions will be taken and controlled by the two groups like government and the private individuals and in the mixed economy then the prices is controlled by the private sector and public sector what are these achieve maximum profit as well as the social welfare so here are some of the important points related to the economics economics is an important social subject it include trade commerce business uh, agriculture etc economics whole so we can understand the overall human development from this particular subject so economics help us to uh, understand the development of a country as well as the development of a human being actually it is globalization of the economy so globalization means building of a world economy world economy is a borderless economy globalization means it is a world economy by adopting the globalization we are free to exchange goods and services investment uh, skills technology etc here we can see the alignment of the country's economy or nation's economy with the world economy before 1990s there were a lot of barriers for doing the trade activities but here after introducing the globalization these all trade barriers were removed from the uh, world so uh, because of that or after the introduction of the globalization each country has uh, can freely uh, do their trading activities with the other countries now we all are using the mobile in our hand different types of mobiles we can see and uh, different qualities are there and its prices are also different all the things not only in the case of the mobile tv uh, then all the technologies and all the things what we are using why what is the reason for that because of the globalization because this policy has removed all the uh, restrictions which was there before or in the earlier in the countries or in the world economy so because of this adoption of this globalization it made free of or the movement uh, that means each country or the traders can move freely borderless movement huh? that means they can exchange of the goods and services their technology laborers then they can do the investment in other countries etc helped us for the development of the world economy okay so because of that now the things what we are using it may be produced in china or it may be produced in america etc okay so what is the reason because of the globalization globalization means or it is helping for the free of movement free of movement what all things are moving freely goods services technology communication uh, transport each and everything what is needed for the trade so it helps a lot for the development of the world economy global operations at the indian branch of a large multinational corporation earlier this year she was on an official tour on her arrival at the hotel the hotel staff gave her a warm welcome they even greeted her with namaste <coughs> as roma glanced through the hotel's brochure she was surprised to see that the hotel's recreational services included yoga sessions and ayurvedic massages globalization has led to increased cultural transactions between different nations no wonder roma witnessed traces of our native culture and customs in a foreign country 
Uma had to conduct a video conference with her colleagues across the globe. For their convenience, she had mailed them all the information before the meeting through their company's intranet. As per her data, outsourcing jobs to India would provide cheap and efficient labor. The data also pointed at some emerging markets where laws were very conducive for foreign trade. As we saw, use of modern technologies such as internet and video conferencing has made communication across nations easier. This in turn has also led to increased employment and trading opportunities worldwide. When her work was done, Roma went shopping at the city mall. She found that many of the products sold in the mall were also available back in India. Roma also ate a burger at the Burger Mania outlet. To her surprise, the taste of the burger was exactly the same as the burger she was used to eating at the Burger Mania outlet in India. Today, improved WTO rules have boosted globalization. Thus, there is a free flow of goods and commodities across nations. One evening, Roma attended an international seminar on the socio-political changes around the world caused by globalization. The participants discussed how globalization has increased international cooperation. They also discussed how globalization had also made people around the world aware of their rights and need to establish a democratic setup. On her way back, Roma thought about the various aspects of globalization and its impact on countries around the world. And next one we are going to learn the importance of the functions of the economy. What are the functions of the economy? First one, to fix the price of a product, deciding the product and the quantity of a product. And the second one, minimize the cost of production. Minimize the cost of production means to reduce the cost of production, then it will help uh, to sell the product at a reasonable price. The third one, distribution of national income for the social and economic justice. Then means social income should be distributed in equal manner in the economy in order to or in the society in order to reduce the poverty. Making appropriate provisions for the economic uh, needs of the future. So, uh, these all are the important functions of the economic. The eighth chapter. In this chapter, we learnt what is economics, what are the importance of economics. So, what is economics? It is a study of, according to Adam Smith, it is a study of wealth. And economics means how we are able to, or how, how can we manage our income with expenditure. The expenditure should not be exceed than the income. And later we learn what are the importance of the economy. It is easy to understand the global, uh, economic situation of our country and uh, what are the reasons for the poverty where we have to improve in our economic level and how the production uh, processes distribution etc are going on and how can we understand that means uh, what all goods are producing and exporting which type of goods are exporting which type of how we are uh, our country is doing the importing and how our country or each country is uh, investing in the foreign uh, investment etc we can understand and later we learn about the types of economy they are capitalist socialist and mixed economy and we learn its characteristics and last we learn about the globalization and its function these younger days most of the electronic products available in india were manufactured abroad these goods were accessible only to a few people by way of gifts from friends and relatives living abroad or purchases made during their trips abroad. Most of these foreign-made products occupied a place of great pride in several Indian homes. However, with changing times, we find a host of foreign goods ranging from electronics to food items, 
clothes to footwear, books to cosmetics, easily available in the Indian market. What has caused this change? One of the most important factors that caused this change is liberalization. Liberalization is the lifting of barriers and restrictions on foreign trade by governments across the world and opening up their markets for global trade. This opening up of markets led to the growth of international trade, foreign investments and MNC participation. The use of modern information and technology solutions further accelerated trade. In simple terms, all these factors caused the integration of different markets across the world with one another. This has also facilitated the interchange of goods and services between nations. This integration or interconnection between the countries through trade and cultural exchange is called globalization. In short, globalization includes free flow of goods, services, capital, workers and technology. There are two main factors that form the basis of globalization. The first being globalization of markets by expanding and extending it across the world. The second is globalization of production by setting up production units in several countries. The success of globalization largely depends on the following factors. Removal of restrictions on firms so that business can take place without any hindrance. Availability of resources including infrastructure to business firms. Provision of quality goods and services at competitive rates. And orientation of business firms on post-globalization trends and behavior. The process of globalization began in India after the new economic policy of 1991 was launched. It initiated the integration of Indian economy with global economy. As part of its globalization plan, India opened up its import-export trade to foreign direct investments. It allowed multinational corporations to invest in important Indian economic sectors. In order to facilitate Indian entrepreneurs, the Indian government removed all restrictions on licensing through its de-licensing policy. The Foreign Exchange Regulation Act was amended further to enable easy conversion of rupee to other currencies in 1992. Imports were liberalized by reducing the tariff rates from 130% to merely 30%. The Indian economy also opened its doors to foreign investment and capital. In this regard, 51% equity was permitted on foreign direct investment in hotel industry and tourism. While in the energy sector, cent percent equity was granted to establish power plants. As a result, India's foreign direct investments rose from $133 million in 1991-92 to $5,181 million in 1999-2000. I hope all of you understood. Complete. Question number one, what is given in your textbook? Read your textbook well and learn well. Complete the exercise questions. Thank you.